What's going on, kings and queens? Mm -hmm. We want to thank you for tuning in for another edition of Dragon Talk. I am here with a very special guest, Coach Anderson and Coach Watt, mm -hmm. along with my co along with my host, Jawan Singh. How you guys doing? Very well. Good. 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 I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to hope you guys have a great season. We're going to get into it straight into it to the question. Okay. Um, last year, you ended the season 12 and 15 but 10 and, 10 and 7 in conference, mm -hmm. uh, which was an improvement from the season yeah. before where you went 5 and 22 overall and 5 and 12 in conference. Were you satisfied with the team's improvement last year? Yes, I was. I think that it was a great achievement and also it set the pace for what we can do for this year. What improvements would you like to see out of the Lady Dragons this year? Well, this year I would like to uh, see us win the championship. <laughs> that would be an improvement. Uh, Coach Anderson, what are some of the major changes for the team coming into this year? Well, I, well, um, we have nine different athletes. And all athletes, we have to learn their personalities. So with that being, taking those personalities and putting it to a system. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully the changes will, will not be that drastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do you rely on defense to carry the team through a game to set the tempo? Or do you think that this year's team will be more of an offensive team? No, actually, I think it works hand-in-hand. -hand because defense generates offense, and offense generates defense. If you can't get any stops, you can't, get any, you can't win. Mm -hmm. So you also have to be able to score. And talking about scoring, uh, you definitely have to practice. Uh, what, are, what are your practices? What are, what are practices like when you're getting ready for the season? Well. Our practice is always intense. We do a lot of co conditioning, getting their minds, their bodies prepared to go through a rigorous season. And, and going through that rigorous season, you're going to have four returning players back, uh, um, and, but it's going to be several new faces. Yeah. Do you feel this is a rebuilding year, or is this a team progressing the way you hope? Well, I don't think it's really a rebuilding year because of the athletes we brought in. We brought in nine junior college players who have some experience. So we're hoping they can <coughs> just carry it on a winning tradition. And uh, this year's team has several juniors and seniors, so, and many of them are coming from junior colleges. Do you feel that this year's team has more experience than the teams that you coached in the past? That's a tough answer. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you talk about attitude a lot, so how much do you feel that the attitude of the players and the team plays into how um, a game or the entire season will go? Well, I always tell my athletes that attitude contradicts leadership, mm -hmm. and leadership also contradicts character. So with that being said, if we can go out there with a willing mind, a strong mind, our character will exist on the court. Definitely, definitely. And there's a, um, during the game, actually, I, I got a chance, we got a chance to watch you guys um, in the Midnight Madness. Mm -hmm. And I was very impressed. It was actually yeah, very entertaining. It was exciting. Mm -hmm. What excites you about your team this year? Their energy. Mm. Yes. Their drive, um, their motivation. Um, I can go on and on. Um, these young ladies are determined um, to be successful. Uh, being successful is is very key, um, and part of being successful, you have to set up a pre a pre conference schedule. When you set up your pre conference mm -hmm. schedule, are you looking to challenge the team early, or do you want do you want it to set up so they can progressively build confidence as they as they, as they get into conference? Well, we try to get the toughest schedule we can. We use this as a measuring stick mm -hmm. to see where we are so that we will be ready for conference play. Okay. And uh, are there any games this season that you are looking forward to um, coaching this year? Every last one of them. <laughs> All right, okay, <laughs> every last one of them. Uh, coach, so uh, Coach Anderson, you seem to be very <coughs> active and intense as a coach. Mm -hmm. How do you translate that intensity and passion to your players? Well, by learning every personality on the court because each personality is different. There's yes. some players I can get on, some players I can't. Um, I think that the system is built by knowing who, who you're dealing with. 
on the court. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. And um, just sitting here with you guys, mm -hmm. I definitely have a certain feel of uh, like a family type mm -hmm. of environment just from you two coaches, but definitely um, there might be some differences. Uh, from the outside looking in, you both seem to c compliment each other as coaches. Mm -hmm. How do your styles differ? And how do you use your strength to work together coaching? Well, that's a good question because I have a scripture for that. Um, <laughs> and it comes from Romans 4, 6, that God give, diff God, God give gifts differently according to his grace. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we compensate each other with respect. And he brings a whole lot to the table that m maybe some things I don't know. But what we do, we compile that information together to be mm -hmm. successful. Sounds good. Sounds good. If I could interject something <laughs> on that. You, me and Coach Anderson, we have uh, like two different personalities. But we have the same goal. Yep. The same goal is to bring a championship here to Lane College. And the glue that I think that binds me and Coach together is our relationship with Christ. And that relationship with Christ helps us through any situation. And we're just having fun <laughs> doing <laughs> and coaching the game. That's good. Fun is always good. But mm -hmm. look, we're going to have a little bit more fun. You guys stay tuned. We'll be right back with a little bit more Dragon Talk. Attention students, basketball season is about to start. Don't miss your chance to be a part of Lane College media team as we cover the games all season long. Hello, kings and queens. Welcome back to Dragon Talk, where we have the infamous Coach Anderson and the infamous Coach Watt. And my boy over there, Coach, you're not a coach. That's Jawan Singh. <laughs> That's not a coach. And uh, we're going to get back to these questions and uh, get, to, get, a get to know a little bit more about you guys. We can get a little deep. And, um, you know, this is for anyone. Coach, talk about your guys' background before coming to Lane College. Well, I started in basketball with uh, my wife and I. We had a youth Christian ministry, and we used basketball as a tool to reach the young people in our community. We traveled the uh, AU circuit for many years, and were very successful doing that. We took fourth in the nation one year, and um, then from there, I spent 12 years coaching high school. High school baseball, uh, football, three years of football, and 12 years of basketball. And was pretty successful doing that. Uh, we had many of our players went on to play Division I basketball. Some went overseas and playing overseas professionally. And right now, uh, currently, I have uh, two of my former players. They're playing in the NBA. Coach? Well, as for myself, um, I was very selfish. I didn't want to <laughs> give up, <laughs> give up playing sports. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually started off with my high school coach, um, Pat Hewitt in Hartford, South Carolina, um, coaching with her. And being the great teacher that she was, she um, taught me a lot about basketball. And I followed that to the HBCUs, playing for Clapton College. Mm -hmm and um, just venture out playing overseas in Vicenza. Okay, and um, so what, uh, question I have for you uh, both is, what brought you both to um, like? Well, my love for HBCUs. Okay, well, I uh, accepted 
uh, a teaching position here at Lane, and I always wanted to be in uh, HBCU. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, what is it about coaching here that um, you two both enjoy? Well, as long as I have the ball in my hand, I really don't care what I'm coaching at. Um, because if you have the love for the game, um, my what I would like to do is try to teach our athletes how to be great citizens. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully um, further that into something different. Okay. Uh, Coach Watt. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you are a professor, that you took a pr uh, professor you know, job. Mm -hmm. um, but you're also, and you're also the assistant women's coach. Uh, how do you balance those two jobs during the season? Okay. Preparation. Um, I prepare long before the season starts. I have my lessons planned out. And when the season comes, I'm ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. That yes. sounds good. Uh, what, what, is it, what is it about the season that you look forward to the most? I love practice. Practice is where we just get better. Um, teaching, 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 teaching never stops. And that's the one thing I just love is practice. Now you say you love practice. If yes. my, your players is coming on here next, when they say the same thing, you know, you know, I'm about, about practice. Practice, but no, coach, um, that's good. Uh, you know, practicing is, is key. Practice is important. Practice is how you win games. And as I always like to say, Juwan. We play to win the game. I said that in the last show, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, what is it about this particular season that you look forward to the most? Maybe having different players. Um, because, like I said, they bring a different energy, a different love, and a different IQ and different energy for the game. So I'm looking actually for some great things this year um, to be turned around. Okay. Um, and when it comes to coaching on and off the court, what do you believe is the most important part of your job? Well, I always tell my athletes the four most important part is God, mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. education, and athletics mm -hmm. in that order. Okay. Um, how, talk about academics. How important are academics to you as a coach? Very important. They can't play for me if they have a D. Mm -hmm. um, I expect for my young ladies, which they are um, graduates of junior college, uh, a lot of them have 3.4s. So um, to earn a degree is something that no one can ever take away from you. Basketball to me is just a tool. You can't go nowhere with it. But the education, you can follow that in your life. Yes. As Coach said, basketball is, is a privilege. They're here for the education, and basketball is secondary. I want to talk about you guys personally as far as when you guys came up, um, your transition from either high school to college, you definitely had a, to have a mentor, somebody that you, you know, idolized. Who was that mentor, that person that you idolized growing up? Well. What if I didn't have one, anyone? Mm -hmm. And I always had a, a strong background. I had both of my parents. Mm -hmm. um, if anything, my mom was the backbone of the family. Mm -hmm. My father was a brick, work, a brick worker. So um, she empowered me to be better than what I was. Mm -hmm. So with that, it made me strong and not hard to have the will and mind to go out and do anything I want to do in life and accomplish my goals. That was beautiful. Thank you. I just want to let you know that was that was beautiful. <laughs> Coach, you have any brother? And, and that was the same for me. My my mom, she pushed me to be the best that I could be. She said, "Well, always just do your best. Mm -hmm. If you do your best, everything else will work out for you." Okay. Mm -hmm. And I have a question for you, Coach Anson. Um, so I yeah, I guess I, we've uh, noticed that uh, a lot of the new players this year are coming in from junior colleges. Most of them are coming in from junior colleges in the state of Mississippi. So. What, uh, what is it about these players from Mississippi that, that made you want to, you know, go down to that state? Well, play? that's a question you're going to have to ask Coach Watts because <laughs> he brought me from Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> the players that we brought in from Mississippi, 
they came from a winning program. Most of the players, their team won 20 or more games. So we wanted to bring in athletes that knew how to win. And that's why we brought them in. <laughs> well, all right. We want to thank the coaches for coming on with us. You guys did a wonderful job. I, I just hope nothing but success for you. And I, I pray for you as, as you go on this journey to win. And uh, we'll be right back as we have some of the players. Lady Dragons coming up. Right back with Dragon Talk. Why are you doing all this speeding? What time you gotta be there, huh? You ain't James Bond. You ain't some GTA character. You are not on Fast and Furious, okay? This is real life and you are a normal pedestrian. Look at a speed sign, all right? Turn off that radio. Pay attention so you don't end up killing somebody like this fool almost did to me. This message is sponsored by Lane College. The power of potential. And remember, drive carefully. On a journey with us to a world connecting you to your college. With a world that is changing at a rapid pace and is technology driven, the Mass Communication Department provides valuable news and information to the public, providing commentary, entertaining through film, radio, television. You can count on the Mass Communications Dragons to keep you on your toes and in the know of the latest activities going on on campus on all social sites. WLCD, the voice of the Dragons. And welcome back to another edition of Dragon Talk. And right now, we will be interviewing the girls basketball players. Uh, first, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves. So introduce yourself. Well, my name is Jade. I'm point guard from Atlanta. What's your jersey number? Yeah. Peace up, A Town Down. Uh, my name is Chloe Roberts. I'm a shooting guard, small forward. Um, I'm Mariah Hopkins. I'm from Gary, Indiana. Okay, and um, so what are you all looking forward to the most this season? Winning, definitely. You know, traveling with my teammates, getting dubs. Yeah, I, I just want to win. That's all. Um, I mean, we just go out there and play our hardest, winning and just come with it. I get a sense that you like you, you are fierce on the court, aren't you? Are you fierce on the court? She the secret weapon. I always go play ball and uh, shoot the ball. But uh, what are your individual goals for this season? Um, well, it's my last year, so obviously to just improve my stats from the previous years. Uh, prove my leadership. You know, I got two more years, so. I gotta go out there, make my mark, and uh, you know, get a ring, a few rings actually. Yeah, I just want to win, play hard with my teammates. That's all. Okay. Oh. So, how about you all talk about the transition from high school basketball to college basketball? Oh, that was hard. <laughs> everything got harder. Running, lifting weights, everything got harder. In high school, I was a post player in high school. So coming here, you know, coach says, well, you got to be a point guard. And I'm like, well, all right. <laughs> yeah, so it's just steady grind. Um, honestly, the transition was very hard for me. I had a, a really great high school coach. Um, we went to state all four years, so we were already pushing the tempo with running. Always lift the weight, so that wasn't ever a problem. So, so you guys have to lift weights. You have to get up early in the morning. You have to practice. Plus, you have to study. Plus, you have to take tests. How do you balance that? How do you balance playing basketball and going to school? Um, it's really just help from your teammates. We're really good about staying on each other, um, making sure that we're going to class, getting our work done. Uh, on road trips, we'll in the lobby, study, so it's just supporting each other in it. Okay, um, so who who was a, a player that you uh, you all grew up watching that influenced your game? Allen Iverson, LeBron James, Mike Bibby, Ooh. a lot of people. Okay. Mike Bibby. 
Um, I guess players like Maya Moore, she played for the same AAU team I played for in middle school, so she used to come to our practices a lot and just talk to us. So I guess she was sort of motivational for me, just her spirit and her passion for the game. Even though we didn't stay, play the same position necessarily, you know, she still had a lot of things that, you know, she talked to us about, about just, you know, perseverance and working hard and being able to sacrifice for what you wanted. Uh, Larry Bird was always my own. Uh, my dad was real big about <laughs> pushing him on me and my sister both because um, he just played hard every minute he was out there. You know what I learned, Juwan? You know, Larry Bird had a game. Yeah, that is a, that is a, that is a fact. Mm -hmm. but what I learned from the, from the men and the women, Nobody said Kobe Bryant. I mean, I think Kobe Bryant <laughs> okay. has to be one of the I never really like Kobe. 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 I never right. really like right. Kobe. Wait, Kobe was number eight or number 24? Both. Oh. Both. Okay. I mean, two for one. But you can't copy his game. You got to copy yeah. his passion for it. Yeah. There you go. You can't do what he does. It's, it's all good, but, but, but check this out. Okay. <laughs> um, what attributes do you bring to Lane College? So what do you think are your greatest assets? What do you what, what do you bring to the team? Um, um I'm not really a, a vocal person on the court. I'm more of a talk to you personally one on one, but I have a lot of IQ for the game and I have a lot of ideas for it, so I feel like that's where I help out the most. Mm, just my personality, my energy. You know, I'm never People who know me, I'm never silent. So I always have a voice on the court, <laughs> on the bench, in the locker room, on the bus. So That's why you're a mass comm major? Definitely. <laughs> All right. I knew my calling. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not really vocal, but um, I think I'm an all-around player. Wherever you put me, I'm going to try to do my hardest, do my best. So that's all I bring. Okay. And um, I know uh, – I know each and every one of you probably have certain ways that you prepare and get ready to, uh, you know, play during the season and train in the off season. So, how, so talk about the preparation and work that you uh, gals put in during the off season and during the season. Um, running, putting up shots, you know, lifting weights, just working out, trying to stay in shape. Um, I actually had a trainer for about a month, and just lifting, running. Stuff like that. I actually did more lifting anything just to get stronger. Um, well, I'm, I'm usually with my dad during the summer, and he's the one who coached me how to play. So any, any little details I need to work on, anything that I need help with, um, he's always been the one to teach me how to do it. Um, what do you like most about playing for Lane? Um, I, I really just like the energy of the whole school, not just the team, but the the crowd. Um, I know my previous school uh, crowd was harder for the girls than it was the guys, so that's definitely an exciting part. It makes you want to play harder for them. And um, lastly, what uh, can we expect to see out of each and every one of you individually and your team as a whole for this upcoming uh basketball season? Win. I'm going to at least try to be more vocal, try to be a leader, so that's something all you can expect from me. Um, score. That's, that's really what I do. So, so you want to score? score. You want to win more ball games? And, and yeah, individually, too. Too. you know, you're going to see my energy, you're going to see my excitement. So you know, always, always see that. I'm always see, you're always going to see support, you know, okay. from me, from my teammates. As a team, you're going to see wins, you know. But I feel like my teammates, they have the same personality, you know, okay. as, as I do. We all have the energy. Chloe, Chloe really playing with y'all. You know, she, she, she gets excited on the court. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have one, one more question. And this is, I want all three of you, three of you to answer. Kobe Bryant or LeBron James? Kobe Bryant. LeBron James. LeBron James. Bryant. No, no LeBron. LeBron James. Bryant. No way. You can come back on the show whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you want, you can come back on the show. But I, come on, y'all. I said Kobe. He nice, but LeBron James in the discussion. <sighs> when LeBron, LeBron does though. it, he doesn't want to take those last second shots. How can you expect yourself to be the GOAT or of the GOAT of this generation 
and you don't want to, you know, take that last shot. It's all right. It's all right. They, they, they just don't know any better, but <laughs> we know better. And we just want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank the Lady Dragons. Thank you guys for coming on the show. I wish you nothing but success for the season and for your futures. Um, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week.